Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And uh, we're still looking in the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 31, and, and it continues the story of Jacob and his father-in-law, Laban. Now, uh, Jacob has been living with and serving Laban for 20 years. 20 years. He's got his Laban's daughters as his wife, Rachel and Leah. He's got two of their handmaidens that they've also given him to have kids with. He has 11 sons at this point. And his father-in-law is getting older, and Jacob realizes that his brother-in-laws are getting jealous of him and all the blessings that he has. And they're starting to scheme for the inheritance. And so uh, Jacob is like, uh oh what do I got to do? And God tells Jacob to go home, to go back to his parents' land, to go back to the promised land, uh, where his brother still is, and, and that's another story we'll get to. So Jacob does just that. But Jacob left while Laban was away working, like three days journey away. So Jacob took his wives, his kids, all his flocks. He didn't take Laban's flocks, he took his flocks, and, uh, and he ran away. I say ran, you can't run with a flocks of sheep and a bunch of kids, but he, he, he left. And so when Laban heard about it, Laban came after him. Okay, and, and Laban caught up to him, and he was angry, but God kind of warned Laban, uh, this guy's my chosen, so don't mess with him. And, and the story ends well. Laban and Jacob meet. There's peace made. There's, you know, weird stories about hidden family idols and all kinds of stuff. But, but uh, uh, it, the story ends well, and, and it ends with redemption. So what is the point? If you say, okay, that's a weird story. It's just, again, historical story about Jacob and Laban. What does it mean for us? Well, Jacob was always running away. He, he ran away from his brother Esau after he had deceived him, and Esau wanted to kill him. He ran away from Laban as an adult uh, when he had wives and kids and, and flocks and herds and, and all this kind of stuff. So he's always running away from his problems, e even though God redeemed every one of those conflicts. Jacob was always running away. Can I just encourage you to stop running away? Stop running away. Stop running away from your problems. Stop running away from responsibility. Stop running away from conflict or mistakes. Because when you're running away, you're running away from God's redemption too. Instead of running away, can I encourage you to run to God? To, to make Jesus your pursuit, your goal? Instead of running from your problems or running from conflict, run to Jesus I mean, Jesus invites us to come to him. He actually says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus invites us to run to him. He, he offers grace. He offers mercy. He offers healing. He offers hope. And God will redeem your life, which is why the writer of Hebrews says, Let us boldly approach the throne of grace with confidence. Why? Because God is for us and God wants to heal us and God wants to redeem our lives and he wants us to reconcile relationships that are broken. He wants to do that in our lives, but he can only do it if we stop running away. You know, when you run away, your problems follow you, just like Jacob's uncle, or father-in-law Laban, followed him. Um, so stop running and run to Jesus and allow him to bless you and heal you and redeem your life. Hey, I hope that blesses you today, Calvary. Have a great day.